Hey guys, it's Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be going over some specific heat capacity practice problems. If the problem mentions specific heat capacity, then you're probably going to be using this equation right here, Q equals MC delta T, or sometimes you might hear it as Q equals MCAT. Q stands for the heat, and that has to be in joules. M is the mass, and the units for that is grams. C is the specific heat capacity, and the units for that is joules per gram times degrees Kelvin, or it can also be joules per gram times degrees Celsius, and these are interchangeable. And then lastly, the change in the temperature, delta T is the change in the temperature, and that can either be in degrees Kelvin or degrees Celsius, and they're interchangeable as well. By the way, to solve for change in temperature, you would do, take the final temperature and minus the initial temperature. Now that you understand the equation, let's take a look at a couple of practice problems, and we'll work through those together. So the first problem, a 500 gram cube of lead is heated from 25 degrees Celsius to 75 degrees Celsius. So you have the initial temperature and the final temperature, meaning you can solve for the delta T. How much energy, which is asking us for heat uh, or Q, was required to heat the lead? The specific heat capacity of the lead is this value right here. So we have the change in temperature. We have the, the mass right here. And we have the specific heat. So we are solving for Q. Then we can just plug that into the equation. Q equals the mass, which is 500 grams. It's already in grams, so we don't have to do any conversion. The specific heat was 0 0.129, and it's joules per grams time degree Celsius. And then the change in temperature is the final temperature minus initial temperature. So that's 75 minus 25, which is 50 degrees Celsius. And then the grams will cancel out, the degrees cancel out, and then you're left with joules. So this will just be 500 multiplied by 0.129 times 50. And then the answer is going to be 3,225 joules. And if you want to convert that to kilojoules, you would just divide it by 1,000, and you can get 3.225 kilojoules. Next question. Next question is, what mass of water can be heated from 25 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius by the addition of 2,825 joules? So let's break down what we have. We have the initial temperature and we have the final temperature, meaning we can solve for delta T again. And we know that's just the final minus initial 50 minus 25. So the change in temperature will be 25 degrees Celsius. We're given that 2,825 joules was of heat of heat was added. So this is the Q value. We're solving for the mass, so that's, that's our goal. So we have Q, we have the mass, and we have the delta T, uh, but, we're, we're, uh, but we, we're not given anything about the specific heat. And that's because the specific heat water usually is some, some value that you have to memorize for uh, questions and exams, and the specific heat of water is 4.1818, or sometimes could also be 184 joules per grams times degrees Celsius. So we have Q equals MC delta T. Our goal is to solve for the M. So we'll isolate M by dividing both sides by C delta T. And it'll give us mass equals the heat divided by the specific heat times the change in temperature. And then now we can just plug in the values. Q has to be in joules and it's currently in joules. So that's good. 2,825 joules. The specific heat capacity for water was 4.18 joules per grams time degree Celsius. And then the change in temperature, we said it was 50 degrees minus 25, which is 25 degrees Celsius. And then when you do that, you can see that the degree Celsius cancels out and the joules cancel out. So you'll just you'll be left with just grams. So to do this, you do 2,825 divided by parentheses because these are, these are two values multiplied by each other on the bottom, divided by parentheses, 4.184, I forgot a 4 right here, times 25, close parentheses, and then you'll get 27.0 grams as the mass of the water. So that'll be the final answer. All right, let's take a look at one last question. This one's going to be a little bit more tedious, just a little bit. So we have one hot kilogram, we have we have the mass right here, but that's in kilograms. We know the mass has to be in grams. So I'll just put mass right here. One hot kilogram chunk of copper is allowed to cool to 100 degrees Celsius. If the copper gave off 231 kilojoules of energy, so we're given energy, so that means this is going to be Q. What was the initial temperature of the copper? And then they give us the specific heat capacity here. 
we're solving for the initial temperature, um, which is uh, where delta T comes in. So let's just isolate delta T first. We have Q equals MC delta T. And then to isolate delta T, I would divide both sides by M and C. So then you so then you would get delta T equals Q divided by MC. And we know that delta T is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So we can do TF minus TI equals Q divided by MC. Our goal here is to solve for the initial temperature, so we have to isolate that. So what we can do is we can add the TI to the other side first, and we'll get TF equals Q divided by MC plus TI, and then we can subtract both sides, subtract Q divided by MC from both sides. So it'll be TF minus Q divided by MC equals TI, and that's how we can get the initial temperature. Then we can just substitute the value. So the final temperature of the copper was 100 degrees Celsius minus Q. Q is the heat, and this is that the copper was giving off heat, which means th this copper was losing heat, so we have to use a negative Q instead of a positive Q. And also look at that the Q is currently in kilojoules, and we know that Q has to be in joules. So what we can do is we can multiply this value by a thousand, because that's that's how you can convert kilojoules to joules, because there's a thousand joules in one kilojoule, and then you get two, two, three, one, zero, zero, zero joules. So that's what we're going to put on top. Negative two, three, one, zero, zero, zero. So once again, it's negative because this copper was giving off heat. If it was gaining heat, it would be positive. Divided by the mass of the copper, and that was one kilogram, but we know mass has to be in grams. So we would multiply this by a thousand to get the grams, because there's just like KJ, there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. So our mass is 1,000 grams times the specific heat capacity, which is given right here. It's 0 0.385 joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius. And then oh, this is in joules, so the joules will cancel out. The grams will cancel out, and then this is degrees Celsius minus degrees Celsius, so you'll get degrees Celsius in the end. Then we just plug this into a calculator. Okay, so we have 100 minus negative 231000 divided by, and when we have two numbers on the bottom, we should put parentheses around both of them, divided by 1000 1, mul multiplied by 0.385. Close parentheses, and then we'll get a final answer of 700. So that means the initial temperature was 700 degrees. So it cooled from 700 degrees to 100 degrees, and in the process, they gave, gave off 231,000 200, joules of heat. Um, so that's how you would do specific capacity problems. Once you read a question and mention specific capacity, then you'll use the equation Q equals MC delta T, and just think about what variable you're solving, and then just use algebra to isolate that variable and plug the numbers into the equation. But you just want to make sure the units for Q is in joules, M is in grams, C is like this, and then delta T is either in degrees Kelvin or degrees Celsius, which you can solve for by using final temperature minus the initial temperature. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry. If you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.